If you're enjoying these videos, you can learn more and support this work by getting my book on practical evolutionary algorithms. It's a practical ebook that teaches you everything from the concepts to how evolutionary algorithms are implemented in practice. All the code examples are in Python with Python notebooks for each section. You'll have unlimited updates when new sections are released. And of course, you'll have access to these supplementary video tutorials. Check it out by clicking the link in the description below or by visiting store.shahinrastami.com directly. You can also subscribe to this channel or follow me on Twitter for updates. In this video, we're going to talk about population initialization. Before the main optimization process, or the generational loop, can begin, we need to complete the initialization stage of the algorithm. Typically, this involves generating the initial population of solutions by randomly sampling the search space. We can see in this figure that the initialization stage is the first real stage, and it's only executed once. There are many schemes for generating the initial population, and some even include simply loading in a population from an earlier run of an algorithm. So, let's have a look at randomly sampling the search space. When generating an initial population, it's often desirable to have a diverse representation of the search space. This supports better exploitation of problem variables earlier on in the search, without having to rely solely on exploration operators. We previously defined a solution X as consisting of many problem variables. We also defined a multi-objective function as consisting of many objectives. However, let's have a quick look at how we can describe a general multi-objective optimization problem before we initialize our population. We may already be familiar with some parts of this, but there are some we haven't covered yet. There are m objective functions which can either be minimized or maximized. The constraint functions, g and h, impose inequality and equality constraints which must be satisfied by the solution x for it to be considered a feasible solution. Another condition which affects the feasibility of a solution is whether the problem variables fall between the lower or upper boundaries of a decision space. The lower and upper boundaries may not be the same for each problem variable. For example, we can define the following upper and lower boundaries for a problem with 10 problem variables. You can see in Python, we've assigned these to the variables d lower and d upper. These are simply a list of numbers. In Python, we normally use np.random.rand to generate random numbers. If we want to generate a population of 20 solutions, each with 10 problem variables, we could try something like the following. That works fine if all of our problem variables are to be within the boundaries 0 and 1. However, in this case, we have 10 different upper and lower boundaries. So instead, we can use something like np.random.uniform. And you can see we've generated 20 solutions within our boundaries. And we can do a quick check to make sure each solution actually falls within the problem variable boundaries. Good. Now all that's left is to visualize our population in the decision space. We're going to use a parallel coordinate plot. If for some reason we wanted to compare one variable to another, we may also consider to use a scatter plot matrix. In this video, we had a closer look at the form of a multi-objective problem and how we can initialize our solutions. We first generated a population of solutions within upper and lower boundaries, and then we checked to make sure the problem variables fell between the boundaries. Finally, we visualized them using two different plots. In a simple evolutionary algorithm, we have a population that is ready to enter the generational loop. 
If you're enjoying these videos, you can learn more and support this work by getting my book on practical evolutionary algorithms. It's a practical ebook that teaches you everything from the concepts to how evolutionary algorithms are implemented in practice. All the code examples are in Python with Python notebooks for each section. You'll have unlimited updates when new sections are released. And of course, you'll have access to these supplementary video tutorials. Check it out by clicking the link in the description below or by visiting store.shahinrastami.com directly. You can also subscribe to this channel or follow me on Twitter for updates.